This week, we're all going to be inspired by a young man, Dylan Nicholson. Dylan's 19 years old, running marathons and doing it for mental health and, and, and really involving himself in charity work. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me on today. I'm keen to discuss why a 19-year-old would want to do that. Before we <laughs> kick in, we met through some product. What's your favorite product of Body Science? The vegan protein, the caramel one. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, it's good. Whack it right? in with some oats after a run. And- There's a marathon tip, guys. Get on board. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by Whey Ultra, a 100% whey advanced performance protein designed for results. The ultimate in post-workout nutrition, Whey Ultra boasts a four-times whey protein matrix of peptides, isolates and concentrate, is loaded with BCAs and EAAs and is rapidly absorbed for maximum recovery and lean muscle growth. It's enhanced with prebiotics, probiotics and five digestive enzymes plus is free from soy, gluten, added sugar, artificial flavours and sweeteners and every batch is banned substance tested. Everything your body needs for recovery, nothing you don't. Welcome to Body Science HQ. Today with me, a young man that is doing things that most of us wish we did every day, Dylan Nicholson. Now, mate, you're a champion. Like, I've watched your Insta for a while. I've been really keen to get you on board. You've done some podcasts with some of our friends and athletes around the place. You've really stuck your fingers in the uh, the mental health world. So, mate, why does a 19-year-old young male living on the Gold Coast want to work with mental health? Shouldn't you just be out fucking partying? Yeah. Well, do you want to backtrack to Let's this? go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, right when I finished school, in 2017 my whole focus was to be a professional water player water polo player so i thought i had the next 10 years planned out was going to go to the american system for four years and then go over and play spain for like six years or so as professional yep and uh just live the lifestyle and saw it through social media had all these people that i was following and you know they look like they were living the lives so essentially after school i did a few odd jobs to basically pay to get over there so i started off with landscaping did that for about five weeks and then slipped a disc in my back yeah nice yeah so that was the end of that so i was pretty glad that i wouldn't be ever doing landscaping again in my life tried it <laughs> yeah that was an interesting one and then my next job was telemarketing which was all about character building, basically. A bit was, of resilience brought along there. Oh, yeah, definitely. A, a lot, lot of people of, wouldn't know what telemarketing is. Like, you're doing, what, 100 and... Yeah, 120 calls a day. A day, yeah. yeah. And so and that's, I'd all be about, like, trying to beat everyone. So yeah. it's like that competitive nature. So I'd sort of bring my, like, sporting aspect into that, like, sort of telemarketing sphere. I'd always be trying to have the most amount of, like, calls and everything like that. So lasted about, I think it was about six to eight weeks there. And I just... Were you selling something exciting? I was selling Google AdWords. Uh, that would have been a tough gig. Yeah. Who were you ringing? Companies or just people? I was ringing businesses. Yeah. So I was ringing your everyday tradie. I was ringing, you know, electrical companies. <laughs> everyday trade. So give us some of the feedback you got. Yeah. So I actually got lectured by one guy. <laughs> he told me, like, he asked me how old I was. And I told him I was 18 at the time. And he's just like, man, what are you doing? Like, you're doing telemarketing. You know, you're probably one of the most hated people. <laughs> And like naturally, it just didn't sound good. And I actually, most people would just hang up the phone, but I actually listened to him. I was like, you know what? I have 120 calls a day and I'm just going to listen to this guy. Yeah. So I listened to him. He actually gave me some good advice on doing what you love. And I think that's one thing that's really stuck with me. Hence pursuing this water polo dream when everyone told me that I couldn't do it. So I- But you actually got in the college system in the US, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So I, I literally picked up water polo in year 10 and started playing it competitively in year 11. And most kids, I'd have to drive up to Brisbane. So mm-hmm. I'd play up in Brisbane, would catch the train up because parents couldn't drive me. And that was like, I look back on that and I'm like, wow, I was like extremely motivated, extremely driven, but only in the sporting sphere like in the schooling system i was probably you know i was an average student i wasn't anything amazing i thought i was amazing i'd come out of every test thinking i got an a but i'd end up with a d i think it was maybe my optimistic got the best of me in some stages but my schooling the schooling system doesn't always bring out the best in people there's some people that do really well like there's some people that just excel when they leave it yeah so. Yeah, and that's the thing, like you just never know. So, And then after the telemarketing, 
marketing role, I essentially tried to run my own little Facebook ads business. Oh, did you? Yep. So I bought a course online for fifteen hundred dollars. It was called. <laughs> and you're, you're eighteen at this stage. You're still eighteen. Yeah, I'm yeah. still eighteen. Yeah. It was Dan Henry. Shout out to Dan Henry. Bought his course, studied it for about twenty days, and then pitched it to a lot of PTs on the Gold Coast. Yep. And I actually had one guy come on board, did a two week trial with him, and it didn't go that well. Uh, essentially like got him a couple leads but he said oh, I don't want you and <laughs> I think he, he gave me like 200 bucks for the trial which was fair enough but essentially I tried to do it when I was over in America so this was like probably getting towards the June July and then went over to America and thought I could do it over there. Whilst so you've gone to America to Golden West College? Yep, Golden play, West College. To play water polo? Yep. yep. And you're trying to run a business in Australia from there? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was all... Did like, you do much planning before you started or you just jump straight in? I jumped straight in. Yeah. I'm like one of those guys. I knew the answer to that. I just thought I'd ask it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so I went went over there and tried to call up American businesses while I was over there in Huntington Beach saying, do you need help with Facebook ads? Like I'd research which uh, websites that have a Facebook pixel. And if they didn't have a Facebook pixel, I knew like- Straight on the phone. Yeah, I could mm-hmm. be like, oh, I can help you out. Put yep. a Facebook pixel on you guys for free and then hopefully I can get some business from you guys. And then it all went to shit because I thought I was like a telemarketer just because of my accent and yep. everything like that. So that threw out that, I put that in the bin. I just said, no, I just got to focus on my water polo because we were training 11 times a week over there. Okay, wow. So it consumed our whole lives. We'd train four and a half hours a day and then be eating probably like, oh, at least a kilo or two kilos of food, like ridiculous amounts. Like we weren't counting calories or anything, but just eating because we were hungry. Yeah, energy expenditure would be through the roof. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. So we were doing that like first two weeks were called hell week and it was essentially you're at the pool like four to five hours every day and that's all you did and so we're getting like eight to ten hours of sleep like yeah i didn't have much time to do anything else i was like i gotta focus all on this and it got to the stage where i was it was actually the third session and i was so excited and i was going home to cook our meal i actually became the cook of the house somehow it was my it was my little escape weirdly so essentially i was cooking and i was watching night and i actually split my finger open so yeah there's a cut right there you can see it okay yeah and i uh, ended up getting six stitches and that basically ruled me out for about two three weeks and that was like <laughs> a bit of a heartbreak no the next day i actually suffered i don't know if i can talk about about it, but I had a, uh, I was doing drugs at the time. I was doing weed. No weed in California, mate. Yeah, I know it, it's <laughs> everywhere. <there. laughs> and I was doing, and I had like my first like major trip, and all these rush of everything just went through my brain. Like everyone saying no, like why'd you go over there? And I felt very like vulnerable and insecure in that stage. And that was probably the biggest realization when I was just like, oh, you know, this might be over, and there's nothing I can do about it because I'm over there. And my parents didn't really want me to go over there and I sort of had to self-fund it but then once my parents I spoke to them about it I, I told them like I can't make any money over here can you help me out and they helped me out and that was a big stress relief off me because then I could just focus fully on water polo so you know after that little trip three weeks in was back to you know normal me and then essentially I was just training day after day not getting much positive feedback and I'm a person who loves positive feedback yep. like I don't really I need some like feedback as to whether I'm going right or I'm going wrong. I never like to be the teacher's pet. So I literally, it took me a lot, but I needed to go to the coach and like ask him, you know, because I wasn't getting any game time. That was the whole issue. Yep. So I went over there thinking I was going to be, you know, a star or something. Essentially, I was on the bench the whole time. So I, I actually, in the grand final, we won. We won the championship for yep. the whole year. And I didn't play <clears throat> in that whole game. I didn't play the whole game. Not even a minute. Not even a minute. And... Like that is probably the most heartbreaking moment when I was just like, I think this dream's over, you know? Like yep. I was like, well, I think I've been a bit delirious in some stages. My optimism has got the best of me and I need to reevaluate my situation. And yeah. Did, you, did your party lifestyle you had for a while when you cut your finger, obviously when you got, you're yep. not training 11 times a, oh, I was still a training. week anymore? You still were training yeah, with your finger? Yeah, I was still training. Okay. So I actually had a cast on and yeah. I'd wrap it around in a plastic bag and I'd just be doing egg beater. So like just all legs. Yeah. I'd be on the bike. I'd still be training when they were training because the coach is always like, oh, you got to show up, you know, show yep. up every day. But yeah, the the weed grew bigger on me. So I was never much into drugs. Coming from Australia, I'd probably only ever tried it once or twice at a house party. And then over there, I was probably doing it every day. Like I got trapped 
trapped in it and just because it just doesn't sit well some people might no nah, yeah. that's it and uh my teammate who's the best player in our team he would smoke it probably like five times a day he hit it before training in between training after training and then like for recreational in the afternoon he'd hit what you call a dab which is like 99 percent thc and then to go to sleep he'd have one so it was just like you're in a house where you're supposed to be like an athlete but really you're just a druggie and it was just like complete shock to the system obviously no drug testing going down in that uh no that no, campus and that no. that system over there no no drug t- no drug testing at all but um because you don't drink alcohol either do you no so i've been no. six months sober now when we're over there we're living for the weekend so we'd be training our asses off and living for the saturday night house parties in america yep which was you know it was fun epic but, but it was uh definitely took a toll you know mm. i think everyone through social media i put up a front that i was living my best life but really i was dying on the inside and not a lot of people would see that you know so and it's not something you really want to talk about so so mate let's touch on that you're like yeah. you're 19 and you say you're dying on the inside yeah what does that mean i'm 50 i got a different theory yeah. what's a 19 year old dying on the inside mean well for me it was like i thought i had the next 10 years of my life planned out and it all went to all went shit, shit essentially so not not having a clear and bright future that's something i've always like had I've always, you know, always been that person to, you know, have a goal maybe five years down the line and then know what to do to get there and just having that lost over there and I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't go back home because, you know, everyone thought I was living this dream life yeah. and I couldn't tell anyone in my water polo house because... They're all stoned of, anyway, weren't they? Yeah, and that was full of alphas, alpha males. You yeah. Know? Like if you... It is a tough thing for men to talk about oh, when, when you're hitting the dark spots in life. It is tough, isn't oh. it? Because we, we're in a house full of alphas. And if you tell, like, you know, if there's any group of males, they'll team up on you. So you can't show any weakness. And it got to the stage where I realized I wasn't going to be over there much longer. So I actually, one of the rawest moments for me was when I went to the sports psychologist. And basically, he was the only person I could really speak to. I spoke to him and I essentially broke down. I just started crying. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is just taking a toll on me. And he gave me enough hope to last out the life. Last, last month I was over there and yeah, that was probably one of the rawest moments and biggest change makers for me. And was that a university funded sports psychologist or was that yeah. somebody you went to outside? No, he was in-house. So. so his job was to keep you motivated on sport in the university or yeah. was it about you? It was it was almost, he was there for external. So like you had a choice to go to and I like would just take the opportunity up because I couldn't really speak to anyone else, couldn't speak to any mates or such. And he was almost like that person that you could really just open up to and he had a psychologist psychologist background but he was just another teacher really so he yeah. what he was doing was just community service in a way he wasn't getting paid to do what he did he was just offering external time that's which, great which was amazing and mate do you think that anyone out there listening who is suffering that same thing that you went through should reach out to someone qualified like a sports psychologist oh. or a psychologist like did you think that was a great step for you to take definitely it was the best thing i've ever done because yeah. if i didn't have him i would have probably probably would have still been in america to be honest i would have just tried to push through it and then eventually done something really stupid Mm. don't know what it would have been but scary to think and mate is this why you've gone down the path of doing a lot of charity work and and tribe related group you like you you've started some groups together of Mm. like-minded people that want to help industry and non-industry fitness people like is is it was that your starting thing because your your instagram account is about positivity and gratitude and is was that the the moment when you said, I can help others? Yeah, well, so the moment for me was when I came back to Australia and I got into drinking a lot. So I was going out three, four times a week, hitting up bedroom, you know, the local places. Yep. And one of my best mates, his dad owns like the nightclubs up there. So we'd get free drinks, treated like royalty. And at the time, it was a lot of fun. But look back on it now, and it was a bit of a curse, you know? So my biggest, the turning point for me was when I got kicked out of the nightclub, when I stopped thinking I was invincible, you know? Assisted or just kicked out? Oh, I got kicked out by a security guard. I tried to run away, go the other way, but he grabbed me and booted me out. I was... was, So that was your second big reminder about what you're doing in life? Yeah. Yeah, I was essentially unconscious in the nightclub, Mm. like just so punch drunk. Like it was shocking. And and then I reached out to this uh, figure called Gavin Top and... 
and he got me into network marketing, which yep. is very frowned upon in society. One thing I've learned, it taught me so much. It taught me personal development and like figuring out what your why is and all that kind of stuff. And through that, met a bloke called Jeff and Jeff got me into running and I was just like, I'm going to run a marathon. So I essentially started running with this with this guy and about 10 weeks into the journey, one of my best mates suffered from depression. He like, I hadn't heard from him in about two days and we usually hanged out every day because at this time I didn't have a job. I was just surfing. I was just lazy. I was living the dream essentially. <laughs> finding yourself, we call yeah, it. Finding yeah. yourself. Finding yourself. I was actually going to, I was planning on going to Bali, telling parents I was going to find myself over there, but probably would have found someone else anyway. Yeah. So one of my best mates, he suffered from it and I basically reached out to his mom because it had been two days. He wasn't replying to any of my texts. It's getting a little bit worried. I had no clue what was happening. And he, his mom replied to me and said, oh, I'll go check on him. And then as she checks on him, he sends me this huge long ass message that he's been bedridden for two days and he's been suffering from depression. So he actually told you that? Yeah, he yeah. actually told me that. So well, that's a good step. Yep. Yeah. That was the first step and that was the biggest shock of my life because I never really known what to do in that situation. So, um, and you know, I don't think many people do know what to do. Like, yeah. what did you do? Like, what was your journey there? So, I essentially just asked my parents, like, what should I do? And they just said, look after him. So, the next morning we went for a run and yep. just got some physical movement into him. So, we went for like 5K run and then uh, we went for a little beach swim and then took him back to mine and basically fed him. Like, he had an eaten for two days got some food into him and just hung out with him for about two days straight just to make sure he was like you know good and he wasn't you know going to go back to his bed and he was eating and we're just doing physical activity so that gave me purpose yeah essentially that and then got into doing this charity so that's the whole reason why i started raising funds for mental health and then essentially raised about 300 dollars, and it was 10 weeks to go to the marathon and I was like, I got to think of something creative to. Because um, you set a target of like five grand or something. Yeah, didn't you? five five grand. So answers for the Black Dog Institute yeah. too, wasn't it? Yeah, so, so great I, cause. I'm a person who always shoots for the stars. Yeah. So I looked on the little banner of how much you can raise, and the biggest number at the time was five thousand. So I was like, oh, I'll click on That's that. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, get to the <laughs> ten week stage, and I was like, I got to think of something creative. So I think I was at I was at a it was at my mate's sister's twenty first. Uh, I was the only one who's sober there this was when i was being sober I still am and <laughs> oh it's just funny watching a young nine-year-old good-looking kid say i'm sober and it's just like it's it's a, you're an incredible human like sorry to mean to cut you off there mate no that's all right yeah. and one of my mates was like i'm i was telling him like this goal of mine and i wanted to run the marathon and raise some money and he's just like oh mate i reckon it'd be funny as if you did it in your budgies and i was just like you know what why not so this is another funny story i actually won this little free modeling shoot yeah. and I, I don't consider myself a model and like I didn't I didn't use any of the photos from the shoot but I asked the guy at the end oh mate do you reckon you could just film a little 20 second video of me saying that I'm going to run this marathon in my budgies yeah. and he's like yeah sure thing and so I used that video and put that on Facebook shared to the Gold Coast Bulletin and it, it like kind of went viral so yeah. the next day I was in the Gold Coast Bulletin and then I was going for my I think it was like my third half marathon run and i'm getting all these message requests on facebook and i was like what is happening here and it's all these radio stations wanting to have me on and hear this story of me running in my budgies in the marathon and i was just like what is happening here and this was at like five o'clock in the morning and i was just saying yes 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 like i'll come on and go on all these radio stations like 9.9 102.9 like all the major ones and and then go on channel 9 news during the middle of the day and then within that week of all this blowing up on social media i raised two and a half thousand dollars yeah nice so like you know people are like oh he's he's delirious like why is he uh, you know one of those youthful people running around thinking that they can do everything and there was a few you know negative comments but a lot of it was positive and it gained traction and ended up you know raising like six thousand dollars so yeah nice work clap that in yeah so and here i am today <laughs> so mate you're a young guy and you've you've 
put yourself out and you've taken some great risks to get you going. How was, like, let's just talk about the anxiety of being a young kid getting asked yeah. to do radio interviews and obviously you had no media training and how were you rocking up to a radio station? Were you rocking up in your budgies or did you? So it was actually funny. So I, they, I didn't rock up to the radio stations. They just had me on call. Okay. Yeah. So I was just speaking on my phone. And one thing is I, I've always been very nervous in public speaking spheres. So I, I find physical activity. Once I do physical activity, I get this rush of endorphins where yep. I feel like I'm invincible. So what I did was, is I ran a half marathon before I did this interview <laughs> and then essentially was just on a bit of a running high yeah. and it was like my little natural drug and um, did these interviews and killed it. Yeah. Didn't, didn't feel nervous just, and I was, another thing was I was walking. Like I'm a person who likes to be walking. moving away to the interviews. Yeah, yeah. Because if that's when I get my like free flowing thoughts coming in, otherwise if I'm pretty stagnant like this right now, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, but like if I was probably on Channel 7 News or something, I'd be freaking out. Like going bright red, just, yeah. But for some reason, that worked for me. So I think it's just about finding what works for you and trying to accommodate to that. So we, everybody wants to know the secret to public speaking. you got to run a half marathon before you start. There you go. You heard it here first. <laughs> So mate, what's what's working with you? you? You you've you've hooked up with the 440 guys with Toddy. Yeah. You've you, yeah. you've hooked up with a lot of people that I know in the industry. You've created a, a group for young men. Is that correct? Yeah. In where I'm, yeah. I'm so caught? that's um it's Mind Pack. Yep. So funny story. I I went down to Sydney. It would have been about five weeks ago, and I messaged. It was actually for a casting role, and I at this stage I was all about like doing things that are outside my comfort zone, and I really just was like, you know what. I'm just gonna try for this like tv presenter role i think it was <laughs> and i didn't get it but i went down there that's gold I was, I was like oh, i'll give it a crack and went down to sydney and i messaged toddy the night before i was like oh mate do you want to jump on the podcast yeah and he's just like yeah sure thing let's do it and then so i after the interview i meet up with these meet up with them and we go do this podcast and then it's all about the 440 and then yep. they tell me that there's one on the gold coast and i didn't even know about it and and we basically, you know, did the podcast. And another funny story, I missed the flight home, so I had to get another flight and mum wasn't too happy about that, but it's another story. And essentially, I met Matty Palmer. So Matty Palmer runs the Gold Coast one and he sort of had a similar vision. He wanted to help out people in the mental health realm. He's always been into physical movement and he's he's been in the athlete scene. So mm -hmm. we wanted to create a space where athletes could talk about some of their moments so because you had Ali Day there and a few yeah. big hitters didn't you yeah, yeah yeah so we had a good turnout we were hoping to get 12 to 15 people but we ended up getting 24 out of 25 wow. capacity yeah. so we he had the network so the one thing that we work well with is I'm still trying to grow my network but he's got that network and I've got that social media so we would work you know hand in hand in that aspect yeah. so I'd look after the social media and he'd look after you know getting people to the event and getting speakers in so we got maxi kennedy which is an ex afl player for the lions and he got uh nick buck which is a he's a cricketer for brisbane heat and then he got another bloke who's just an everyday joe and we heard three stories that were some of the Aurora's moments that you wouldn't necessarily hear in a normal conversation. And one of the blokes, Nick Buck, really opened up. He spoke about one of the stages where he almost, you know, took his own life, which was quite real and very powerful. And our whole goal with this mind pack group is to not educate such, but more so just have a casual conversation about it in an informal way. Because that's us as blokes. We're yeah. informal humans who don't like to see, you know, PowerPoint presentations because we know they're just they're not speaking with passion you know they're not speaking from the heart they're just speaking from words on the powerpoint screen that they did probably two days ago you know or they've been studying their whole life but they actually haven't experienced it so we're all about experiences and that's the best way i found that learn and creating a whole group of people that you know if i was a young athlete you know at 17 i would want to be hearing stories from people that i look up to some of their rawest moments so it was really special we actually had a young kid and his dad there which was very cool now we 
but just the sky's the limit with that kind yeah. of mind pack. And mate, how do people get into mind pack if they're interested in reaching out? So they just follow the social media on Instagram and Facebook. And what's that? It's just mind pack. One word? Yeah, mind pack. So. Nice. Yeah. Is that a play on six pack by any chance? Yeah, it actually is. So <laughs> our whole like little not mission statement, but saying around it is that we believe like the health and fitness industry focuses on six pack abs, but yeah. we focus on a six pack mind. So. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably look. called a vision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, tell yeah. us about you, you've obviously geared up. Your mate, your mate's been sick. You've got a process. You've gone to the Black Dog Institute. You've picked. What, firstly, why did you pick Black Dog Institute? Yeah. So essentially, I'm a big person who I'll just speak to people and ask for advice from them. So I just spoke to this one brand. And they said Black Dog's a very reputable company. Yep. They've been doing great work in the mental health industry. So I just chose them. And yeah, that's basically how it all happened. How it all happened, hey? Yeah. And so. You started running because you felt good running, like you, you and you took your mate through that process when he went through the same. Like to go from a five k run to a marathon is a big step. What did you, who did you reach out to and who who helped you run a marathon? Like you just can't put shoes on and run a marathon. You got to have a bit of a process and a journey. Yeah. And well, it all started for me when I did this. I ran five k's for a whole month. So I ran five k's every day for a month straight, and that basically I think gave me the fitness to sort of cover the distances. And then there's this one guy called Jeff who basically we'd train twice a week so every monday we'd get up at a ridiculous time usually 3 30 4 a.m wow and uh run a half marathon and i'd have a few mates message so you went from 5k to 21 just straight up uh no so i did a 14k yeah that was like probably the biggest stepping stone yeah and then realizing that i could run 14 kilometers i was like holy you know like i can actually do that and then two weeks three weeks after that i did a half marathon and when i did that half marathon it was like i hit the 15 kilometer mark and it was like an experience i've never never really experienced before it was like where you felt like giving up but you pushed through it and it was like you were in autopilot mode so from 16 kilometers to 21 kilometers that's when i was just like all autopilot it and just somehow just doing it and that was like the turning point for me realizing that running is all mental it's a mental game and if you can just push past you know a couple barriers then you can like i've got goals to run 500 kilometers like i it's i it's did not, introduce you to kieran Douglas. you met kieran yeah yeah, yeah like, he's kieran. a weapon isn't he he's an animal yeah <laughs> uh, actually that's another funny thing is like the things that have come from running like i don't consider myself a runner i actually want to do a whole range of sports just to prove to people that you can do anything it's just you, your mind telling you that you can't do it i actually met kieran at an asics event got invited to an ah, asics did event you? Yep. And he's an ambassador yeah, yeah and i couldn't believe it i was just like you know i would come probably you know 50th in cross countries at school and now i'm getting invited to asic events you isn't know? it unreal like that yeah. community once you give to a community and you're part of it and, and you're yeah. legitimate yeah it, it, the, it just doesn't stop you wait and see in the next five years your journey is going to be something incredible yeah yeah you know? um, and it's it's funny because it's like it's a hard thing to see that like people will tell you oh yeah you know we'll look for the next five to ten years it's going to be amazing but like it's almost you know every day is a struggle mm. you know like i think one thing i've learned and a lot of young people struggle to realize is patience is everything like realizing there's a longer picture and that you are so young and you can trial everything and you can fail at everything but as long as you keep trying that's the main thing like i i don't understand how people can go from school and thinking that they can decide their future by four or five options on a, on a qcs test like i failed my qcs test and there's people out i actually told everyone that i passed it but i actually mm. failed it i can honestly tell you i think there's more people out there that that failed it but just don't want to openly share about it and i think we're all different learners you know mm, exactly like i'm i'm hands-on visual i love doing things i, I hate reading yeah and i think it's just playing to your strengths to oh, i'm out. the same I'm a, I'm a visual person too man yeah. I, I totally get where you come from and i definitely didn't cut the mustard as the best student at school i'll give you that little heads up <laughs> and my arts degree which i finished in about 10 years I think I got one of the records at Griffith Uni for that too, just quietly. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a struggle for me. I'm, I more prefer to think and act. Yeah, you know, that's uh, I can see things, and I, and I just and I have no fear of starting something. And yeah. you know, if you fail, you learn from it, and move on, and make it work next time. You oh, know, it's a hundred percent. I think that's that's the biggest thing I've learned is that you don't get that from the schooling system. No, you just got to try. Like I got 
like we were saying before, I've got mates who are way better videographers, photographers than me, but they don't believe in themselves enough to, you know, create some content for people. And they're all about perfection. And perfection is like, I think it's, it's a curse. You know like, the thing about perfection? You never get there. No. Nah. Like you're always waiting for that new camera, that new lens to make it better, but it's it's never going to happen. Yep. Like, I know one of my closest mates, he could so be a full-time videographer, photographer, but just is always waiting for perfection. He's going to be waiting. Mate, you, you do a bit of that videography work and you obviously need to get some work because you're doing too much charity work. <laughs> Mum and dad will be telling you to get a real job. Tell me about Being it. a parent, I've said that once or twice too and not really meant it. Walked away going, why the fuck did I say that? But you know, you've got to stand by what you say. Yeah. Mate, Um, how do people get onto you if they want to get some content done? Oh, they're just... Is that probably your first problem? Yeah. That um, should have been the first answer. Oh, you go here. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, yeah, you can message me through Instagram, Dylan Nicholson Journey, Facebook. At I Dylan might Nicholson. slow that down a little bit. It's Journey. <laughs> we left out the Z and the X. We only got all 26 letters. So, yeah, so if somebody wants something, jump on your Insta and they can DM you. Yeah, yeah. I love this new age business. So oh. like, do you have an email? Yeah. Nah, yeah. that's so old. I don't, I don't do email either. I can't really say that. Yeah. Well, they can email me. It's like DylanNicholson341 at gmail.com, but whatever. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Whatever floats their boat. <laughs> I love youth. I just love the fact that you're this young, and you're an entrepreneur. I mean, you haven't found what you want to be an entrepreneur uh, yet, but you're, do, you're doing so many cool things out there. And I just love the fact that, you know, a business plan is something we can do. It's not something we need to, like your mate constantly is looking at his business plan oh, I need a new camera I need this yeah. or I need that I need that you've just gone out and, and you do things I mean well, at that, 19 years and two years out of school you've been to America had a drug addiction had a mental breakdown helped to make it through a mental breakdown done a marathon done a few videos on the way to keep mum and dad at bay on the real job scenario and made some good decisions not to go to Bali when you shouldn't have I think that's one of the biggest decisions you made that I w- was nodding as you were saying that going that would have been so fucked up if you went there I love that place hey? yeah it's a good place so what, what do you got what do you got for the young kids out there that that don't know who they are or what they are would you would you would one of the things you say is do something for someone else first yeah i think one thing for me is the biggest realization i was always chasing money so yep. in business i my first business when i started when i was 16 was um selling, 16 i missed that one sorry yeah yeah <laughs> um, i was selling wave rings so i uh, got them from what's a wave ring so it's a it's a, oh, it's a ring with a wave picture yeah, on it yeah, yeah okay cool. yeah so got those from alibaba trusty yep. alibaba and i uh, bought 200 of them yeah old stock yeah this was when influencer marketing really started to kick off. So yep. it would have been three years ago now. I grew this social media account to about 20,000 followers and I was like, I'm going to release a product. So everyone was doing t-shirts at the time. I was like, oh, I'll do wave rings. Did wave rings and sold about, uh, I think it was 150 of them. And I thought I was like some entrepreneur genius, you know, like at 16. You should do 150 out of 200 yeah. straight up. That's yeah. good with no business plan. And I was like, it was funny because I had a weird method to my genius. I'd like go to house parties and I'd always bring a bear ring and I'd get super drunk and just give it to like the best looking girl at the night and then hopefully she'd post she'd a, use it yeah. yeah post a picture of it I'll tell you say 15 bucks postage in yeah. an initial message exactly it's pretty clever really exactly <laughs> and then I'd also just message you know influencers on the Gold Coast which there is an abundance of essentially say you know um, can you post a picture and they'd say oh, I, I charge this rate and I'll be like oh I'm, you know I'm 16 I'm starting out like <laughs> would you be willing to help me out and then most of the time they'd say yes and yeah, get not- the picture if you don't ask, you don't get it, do you? Yeah, exactly. And then that was when like growth was insane on Instagram and it was really working well. And then, yeah, people would ask me like, oh, where do you see the business going? I was like, I don't know. I was just enjoying it really. But long story short, I was always chasing money. And the biggest realization for me was when I stopped chasing money was it's actually a byproduct of the service or energy that you put out, whatever it may be. So for example, when I started, started up this page, Dylan Nicholson Journey, which was- Dot, dot in the middle. Yeah, dot, dot, <coughs> dot. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, when I started that up five months ago, I started getting a few messages from people my age saying, you know, I'm inspiring them. And I was just like, that's a bit weird. Like I've just- come back from being on a drug addiction you know alcohol abuse everything you know and i'm inspiring these people to go a bit sober you know like that you actually can have a social interaction with people at 19 and not be drunk or you can meet a girl and not be drunk or meeting them on tinder or bumble or whatever you can actually never heard of them yeah well there's a whole range of them and (laughs) there's definitely abundance (laughs) (laughs) 
and just, you know, be sober. So I got some really like heartfelt messages giving these people hope that I've never met before. And that was a realization where the effect that you have on others is worth more than any paycheck. Yeah, and nice. That, that has stuck with me the past six months. And it's that uh, purpose word, isn't it? Yeah. It's a purpose. Like that's a reason to get out of bed. Oh, 100%. So yeah. I would, I would literally like get a message a day back, you know, four or five months ago. And that would make me show up so much on social media. And I, n- I never thought I'd be this confident on social media. Like I was a very insecure person, always have been. But the biggest shift for me was when I realized instead of always focusing on what others are thinking or the negatives, create this imaginary person. So for example, I created a person who listed the characteristics that I wanted, which was positive, optimistic, outgoing, sporty, and is looking for something new. So I just list that and speak directly to that person through social media. So I I wouldn't care if there would be, you know, a thousand people looking at this, but if I can reach one or two people, that is worth more than anything. Like that 998 other people who are talking shit, that yep. doesn't mean anything to me. The two kind messages or the two messages that I've had a <clears throat> effect on these people is worth more than anything. And that's the biggest shift. And that's why I'm, I show up so much on social media. I'm going to... um introduce you to a doctor named Dr. Craig Duncan. He was uh, him performance at the Socceroos for years. Yeah. He's really emphasized like self-science. Yeah. One of the things that he talks about is your deathbed scorecard. So you're on yeah. your deathbed yeah. and you, you, with your wife, your kids, whatever. And yeah. you know the stuff you say to them, oh, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. I wish yeah. you're doing, you've done that. You're 19 years old and you've just done that. Oh, I wish I was this, this, and this. You called it a false person, but yeah. it's like a deathbed scorecard. He does all the work with Benny Seymour, who oh, you really? met on the yeah. Red, Bull, Red Bull Defiance. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about that in a second too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up with him and have a chat because I think you two could do a lot of good things together. He's got yeah, a right. lot of research, published research behind what he's achieved in life. And what would Dr. Craig be? Jeez, I could be making a mistake. I'd say he'd be in his 50, 50s, 50 plus. So great guy, you know, does a lot at university level too, but just a really good human. Next yeah. time he comes up, I'm going to hook you guys up for lunch. And oh, yeah, epic. Yeah, I think you'd get a lot out. Like a, lot, a person like that will give you some really cool direction yeah. on where you're going and probably explain why you do a lot of things you do yeah. which is cool because once you know yeah. why you do it you can share it and teach others oh, and... self-awareness yeah. is the biggest thing i've learned yeah you know? it's that, amazing isn't it oh it's amazing like i i thought i had a close group of 12 friends and i've realized i've only got two close mates mm. and i trust them with my life yeah but those two mates like there's a lot of people i was always chasing friends i wanted to be a people pleaser and once i stopped like doing things to please others and doing it to you know better myself as selfish as that sounds it it's going to help more people and I think that's a big shift and a lot of people suffer from it. <laughs> oh, mate, that's, um, let's talk the word anxiety. That's the number one reason for oh. this uh, high level anxiety a lot of people have got. Oh, let's talk me. about something positive. You just did yeah, Red Bull Defiance. It. Yes. So I'm going to ask you, why, why did you want to do that? Funny. Okay, this is actually a really good story. So I saw it pop up on my Facebook feed. And I'm a person who never likes to say no. I'm a <coughs> bit of a yes person. There's a and movie about that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a funny thing. And I was like, this is me. This yep. is me. This is what I want to do. I'm all about seeking discomfort, challenging my mental state. So I use sport as a way to push the boundaries of my mind and what our body's actually capable of. Because I think like I have a dream of like doing something pioneering in whatever it may be. Like a guy I look up to is Ross Edgley who swam around the whole of Great Britain. I want to do something like that except I don't know whatever it may be but just something that's never been done before. But yeah and then started this. I saw it on Facebook and I was like I'm going to do it. Didn't have any money at the time. I was broke and I think I actually owed my sister $100. That's how. That mentioned. doesn't count. Yeah. No, don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, essentially was like, I'm going to do it. I committed to it and said, I'm going to do it. And I reached out to Toddy and Trent because none of my 19-year-old mates want to do a 150-kilometer event. So wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. Go figure. And anyway, even get off the couch. That's good Uber Eats these yeah, days, don't you? Yeah, that's it, mate. And asked Toddy and Trent, oh, do you know any blokes that'd be keen to do it? And they basically got me in contact with this one guy called Nick Harris who was keen to do it. He lives in Sydney. And yep. we just kept in contact. We're like, yep, yeah, let's do it. And I still had no clue how I was going to fund this trip. Essentially, I did a podcast with a guy six weeks before this and he called me 
me up literally no joke no word of a lie a week after i committed to it saying that he needed to do a fi- i want he wants me to do a film job for him and this film job would pay the whole trip yeah nice yeah so my little story behind it is that when you commit to something it's gonna naturally happen everything you know? will align yeah everything will align yeah. as scary as it may be as much as your parents may yell at you it will happen that's mum and dad's job so mate they've yeah. got to do that they've yeah. got to they've got to be the the break that's it so yeah and then committed to it i actually thought i was going to do it in my budgie smugglers and you didn't I, no i didn't because i realized that my butt would be absolutely destroyed and i needed a bike kit sort of thing so a good mate of mine maddie palmer um, from mine pack he hooked me up with a one of those lycra suits that they wear that's got the bum cushioning um <laughs> for the big <laughs> it's got a chamois in it yeah, yeah yeah for the big 53 kilometer bike yeah so i rocked up to north queensland on it was last friday and met everyone and started off saturday morning at 4 50 i actually woke up at four o'clock ate some food and then we jumped on the buses for an hour drive to where we started rafting oh actually before that on the friday we did like a little seating thing two kilometer kayak yep. our rudder was spinning around in circles and well, that makes it tough yeah it made it tough so we ended up like placing pretty bad but yeah and then we did that essentially put you in what raft you'd be in so we were in raft i think it was like nine or ten out of 13 so towards the back and uh we're with with uh scotty henderson Do you know scotty oh henderson yeah yeah everyone knows Health. scotty yeah yeah we're from we're with him his mate who's a drummer for uh some big big rock band i forgot what it's called yeah parkway drive oh okay parkway nice. drive yeah. i actually didn't know this but he's a big shot like <laughs> professional drummer and i thought he's just an everyday joe just from byron is that bay. the everyday joe you were talking about earlier in the- no 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 no, okay. no 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 but i just thought he was just some byron bay bloke but he's from park rock <laughs> and or whatever it is and <laughs> he's like full professional drummer no joke we're going down the kayak and we were losing spots like we ended up finishing last in the uh raft which yep. you thought you couldn't lose spots in because it was like one after one after one. But yeah, we ended up finishing that last. Did you come out or did you stay in? Um, no, I stayed in, stayed yeah. in. So I was very happy with that. But my rafting abilities weren't very good. So well, it's not something you get up and train for every day, is it? No, so I was copping a bit from the boys because I was the youngest, but it was all right. <laughs> And then we did a abseil down this just cliff thing, which was pretty cool into the water. And then we got in and did the 23 kilometer trail run, which was basically the turning point because for the first five kilometers, I was struggling to keep up with my partner, Nick. But then after that, he busted one of his calf muscles. Ah. So it was basically struggle street for both of us. And I would, he couldn't go up hills. So he'd start like just cramping up real bad. So I'd have to push him up the hills and then we'd run down together but most of the hills i just have to push them up and it just really showed like character building for me like what a leader is and you know not trying to run ahead and yep work as a he- team be the hero you know yeah just push through it together so what a weapon for keep going too you could have easily said yeah no, I'm oh gonna. he's a- He's a mentally tough guy. Yeah. Definitely. And he didn't want to give up. So it was good. And then we got to the 23 kilometer stage. We did that. Super stoked. He was absolutely shattered. And it was, this is actually a little funny story. Um, we're going to, there was no water at the, the Red Bull station or the halfway mark. So I was just like, oh, grab him a Red Bull. And as I'm going to grab a Red Bull, the film crew come over yeah. and want to give me a little interview, asking me how the run went. And I was just like, all right, let's do a little interview. I'm doing this little interview, just asking me how the event's going, like how the run went, how the raft went and all that. And mid interview, I hear from Nick yelling out to me because he's on the ground, like trying to stretch out his calf that's screwed up. Go grab me a red bull and let's get out of here (laughs) like what are you doing like trying to you know do an interview and i was just you know young caught up in the moment i guess (laughs) bright lights and cameras yeah that's it not the first one mate don't worry about that (laughs) and then um i'm going down to give him the red bull and then go grab our bikes and we're about 100 meters down the hill and i touched my head and i realized i've left my helmet in the bag and i had to run back up grab the helmet 
and Nick's yelling at me like, I can imagine. Yeah, doing. And then the camera crew's got it all on film, and I'm just shaking my head at the camera, just looking down. Just I hope no one sees this, but everyone was seeing this, and then everyone's just looking at me like, "What are you doing back up here?" And I was like, "Got my helmet." And uh, yeah, and then we did the 53 kilometer bike, which was very interesting. It was my second time mountain biking. So, was that it? Yeah. Yeah, that would have taught you a new one. Yeah. So yeah. my first time was actually on the Wednesday. So, oh, that week. Yeah, of that week. So. <sighs> I love yep, it. Yep. I love it. And, uh, and then we finished the 53-kilometer bike. Luckily, no broken bones or anything like that. The first day was done in 10 hours and I think it was 15 minutes. And that was day one done. And then we had an ice bath, went to bed, woke up at 5 o'clock the next morning. And we did a 22-kilometer mountain bike, which was basically a sprint. And we did good in that. It took us about an hour. We yep. probably placed around 10th or 11th. Okay. Yeah, we were, you know, going all right. Going out in the car. And we're going from Mission Beach to Dunk Island. I'm not sure if you've been to Dunk Island before. The crew told me what they were doing. It. There's a few little nasty bits in there for you, I got yeah, told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're paddling out. We're about to hit the four kilometer mark and one of our rudders just keeps falling off on the right side. We're basically spinning around in circles and Nick would just be blowing up like, you know, F, 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 F. And I'd just be in the front like a little guy just, just try and, you know, do my thing like, paddle 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 and every single minute just stop and it was literally the most frustrating thing in the world and essentially we had to um call the boat to come grab us and because we were in the middle of the ocean and we couldn't go anywhere we're going to miss the cutoff yeah it would have been day over so we basically made the call that we've got to you know cop a time penalty and go over and catch the boat to the next island where we ran 10 kilometers and then we used we actually we were that far behind that many boats had passed us we were I think one of the last three or four out of the 43 teams what we were doing was uh we finished the run and they managed to grab the winner's kayak and give it to us oh, after yeah, nice. we'd done the 10 yep. kilometer run around the island so they had already finished and we still got like another hour and a half to go and we used their kayak to paddle back to mainland and then we did the you are comparing yourself to Courtney Atkinson though yeah oh, he's a weapon yeah Courtney Atkinson yeah. is an absolute yeah. animal. Great bloke too. Yeah, good bloke. Never met him, but yeah, good bloke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing the seven kilometer run on the beach and Nick was carrying me for the first four kilometers because I was I was almost at the stage of crying. I was literally in that much pain. He was just pushing me, pushing me to my absolute limits. And I think that's one thing that this team event did really well. It basically, when you felt like giving up, you had that teammate there that was going to like grab you and pull you along. And and so because you have to finish as a team don't yeah, you yeah we finish as a team so nick and i started getting a bit delirious and dehydration started to kick in and we saw this australia flag and we <coughs> thought that was like a red bull flag and we thought that was gonna be the end but we realized that was the 4k mark of the 7k run of the uh. after 143 kilometers of this absolute torturous race so we got there and nick nick just shut down he he essentially was just thought thought he'd done it, and you know when you think you've done something yeah. and you got so much more to go, you sort of just get real negative. So, so. mate, what did, what did, what did how did a nineteen year old handle? Like he's an alpha, obviously, because the story you tell her how it's been on the whole way and yeah. fuck this and fuck that and da da da. Like, how, what did you do? What did I do to? What? Yeah, well, like he shut down. What, yeah. What, what could what? you give him at that stage? So basically, I said I'm gonna take charge of this now. So I essentially looked after him for the last three kilometers. So yeah. I would pull him along he'd be my jog would be like his fast walk so i'd just jog and push him up a bit yeah and said like look mate we've got this you know we've we've only got three kilometers left i just constantly trying to be feeding him positivity as in mate let's just reflect a little bit we've just done 140 kilometers together this is our first time meeting each other let's just take a moment to really grasp this in look up instead of looking down yeah nice and that's good advice isn't yeah, it? look up yeah look I'm up a big fan of that enjoy you know the moment take the scenes in we're in we're in one of the most beautiful parts of australia if not the world look at it you know there's beautiful palm trees there's a great barrier reef the right of us you know and we've just done the first red bull defiance in australia yeah nice know? so we're just basically trying to take every positive and then i just would just be pushing each other and then eventually we saw the finish line and
and ran across that bad boy and couldn't be happier. <laughs> yeah, nice, mate. That's a great story. Yeah. Look, I won't keep you much longer, mate. Let's. I just want. I just want to finish this little chat with something you've you've told me is I just want to do something meaningful. Okay. Well, let's give it to the people. What is that thing that's meaningful? Well, meaningful for me is like having an effect on other people, a positive effect on other people. So my like mission, a good book to read is actually Think and Grow Rich. And I ask you this question, like, what is your underlining mission in the world? And my like, what I wrote down was to um, a positive effect on more people than I can ever meet, whatever that may, you know, encounter. So I sort of see myself being a speaker one day and not like Tony Robbins, but just having a positive effect on more people than I can ever face-to-face meet so yeah whatever that may entail yeah nice that's some strong words from a young man who's definitely changing the world thanks for coming on mate i'm really stoked you can make it on it's been fun mate. keep it up don't don't stop mate. don't anyone tell you can't do it either yeah mate it's been awesome that went really quick and anyone out there that can line dylan up with some assets to help him get to where he needs to to help anyone you know, just reach out, DM him. He doesn't really have a, any way else to contact him. That's a new way. Or you can email him on that thing that had like 50 numbers and shit on it, but I can't remember what that is. So just to finish off, dylan.nicholson.journey. Check it out. There's lots of uh, dick tog shots on there for you people that want to see that. Is uh, But mate, well done. You've run a marathon. You've done some cool things and you're definitely going to give to the world and that's what it's all about. Yeah, thank you. Rock on. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse. House, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.